Watch how these odd interrogation tactics fail to crack this video gamer, Rocky Rambo, into confessing double murders. Find out what they are and why those tactics failed next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. Derek Van Shake here. Rocky Rambo is the 25 year old video gamer who was convicted in June of 2020 of first degree murder of his neighbors, Richard and Diana Jones, in their Vancouver home on the evening of September 26, 2017. And after he committed the terrible act, he casually ate a peach and drank a glass of milk out of their refrigerator. He eventually admitted to committing the murders in trial, but claimed that he didn't know he was doing it in real life, instead, thought he was doing it in a video game. Has admitted he killed the couple, but claimed on the witness stand that he believed believed he was playing a video game. Really? His lawyers are arguing it wasn't premeditated and Cam was unable to form the intent for murder. We pick up here when Rocky Rambo was first arrested and then interrogated because detectives spotted him on surveillance cameras picking up supplies used in the murders at the local store. So they sneakily obtained his DNA and was able to match the DNA to the foreign skin cells found underneath the victim's fingernails. However, despite the mountains of evidence against Rocky Rambo, he does not admit any involvement in the interrogation and even plays the interrogator. So we're going to break down police interrogation tactics used on Rocky Rambo, along with analyzing body language to finally reveal their interrogation secrets and what they could have done differently to possibly get a confession out of Rocky Rambo on that critical first day. Now, let's get started. Hey Derek. How are you? Good. Meet. I'm Sergeant Leah Terpsma. Yeah, we'll just call her Interrogator Leah. Notice that she's not wearing a police uniform. Interrogators will almost always wear civilian clothes. So the suspect isn't constantly reminded that he's speaking with a cop who can throw his ass in jail. It's good to meet you. How are you today? I guess you've had better days. Yeah, sure. <sighs> yeah, sure. Well, um, you're Rocky, are you? Yeah. What should I call you? Is that the name you like? Rocky. Notice where she's sitting. Yeah, okay, I'll call you that. Call me Leah, of course. Right, she's kind of sitting next to the table, so she's not in a complete adversarial position, while also making her whole body visible, causing him to trust her more. We subconsciously trust people more when we know that they don't have anything on them that can harm us. I've come in to talk to you about what's going on, because I'm sure you're wondering what's happening. Pretty often there's a lot of people that we need to talk to, and we need to clarify their involvement, if any. We've got coffee en route, so how do you like your coffee? No. You don't like coffee? Oh my god, you are not a millennial. The old coffee trick to get him caffeinated to increase his anxiety, making him more talkative. Remember Colonel Russell Williams in my previous video? I didn't want to drink Would you like something else? I want some snack, please. Like what? Like a sandwich? If I can, sure. Sure you can. What, what would you like? Food is extremely effective to get the suspect to talk for a lot of reasons. First, it's a small unexpected gift, so the suspect feels like he owes the interrogator. Remember, in the free world, suspects don't have to say a word to anyone, so the interrogator must make him want to talk. Second, when we share a meal with someone, we naturally start to open up to that other person. Have you ever shared a meal with someone and not talked to them? Yeah, pretty awkward, right? And a sandwich, like a chicken sandwich? Sure. Okay. Buying a couple turkey sandwiches for 20 bucks to get a confession is a pretty good deal for taxpayers. Because if they don't get him to confess here, and he starts talking to his attorney to come up with a bogus alibi, it'll possibly cost taxpayers tens of millions of dollars to prove his guilt in years of trial. Make sure you let me know, Rocky, if there's anything you need for your comfort today. So do you have any understanding of what, why you're here today? You're one of many people that we've talked to, and there's been times when we've seen you in the neighborhood so we knew that you lived near nearby and so that's one of the reasons why we're talking to you here here they are here do you recognize those folks uh I have nothing to say. That's the first time that Rocky says, I have nothing to say. It's important to note that Rocky spoke to an attorney over the phone right before this interview. Is your lawyer attending the police station? No, I don't think he's going Okay. So yes, it will be an uphill battle to get him to confess, but it can be done. So these people, uh, are they familiar or neighborly with you? I don't want to talk about it. It's only the first few minutes of this interrogation and they're already going deep into his connection with the crime. When he said, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. It should have been taken as I'm not ready to talk about it. So what do you think the interrogator should do? So obviously this brings up some something emotional for you, Rocky. I don't have nothing to say. 
Yes, back off and just get him talking about the months and years leading up to that day. As we talked about in my prior videos, once a suspect starts talking, it's difficult for them to stop. Can you think back to a time when you started out cold with someone, but once they got you talking, it feels like you overshared your life? The same concept applies here. Just get the suspect to start talking about everything leading up to the crime, and they'll continue speaking once the crime is brought up. Because yes, murderers typically want to talk about what they did, and they want to talk about it to an empathetic person. Even if that person's the interrogator, because after the crime, they typically feel alone and misunderstood. Here they are here. Do you recognize those folks? Uh... I have nothing to say. Rocky isn't acting like an innocent person at all. Obviously, if an innocent person was accused of murder, they would emphatically deny it. We're not going to be calling out the obvious things like that. Instead, we're going to be focusing on the interrogation tactics and dynamics. He's clearly not ready to talk about anything that can tie him to the crime, but she keeps bringing it up. And the more he keeps repeating that... Neighborly with you? I don't want to talk about it. I don't have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. The more he's unfortunately solidifying that in his mind. So is there anything that you need right now, Rocky? Savage. Yeah, okay, so those guys will get that for us right away. Rocky, you're kind of new to BC, aren't you? Yeah, what are you doing here? Finally, she takes a step back to ask him questions that he feels comfortable to answer. Finding jobs. Educated in economics? Yep. How old are you? 25. 25? My dad is an engineer. She was a teacher, but she's retired now. And they still live in Calgary, don't they? No, they, they are in Hong Kong. I'm not good at English. Well, this sounds okay to me. Did you notice how she mentions that his English seems fine? Do you know why? Are you having any problems understanding me? Yeah, you seem able to, to function well. I think your English is excellent. No, I don't think so. <laughs> It is. Right, she can't interrogate a suspect and have it admissible in court if the suspect doesn't understand what his rights are and what he's saying. Turkey. Turkey? Warm. Warm? Thank you. There you go, my friend. You surely caught that. She cleverly calls Rocky her friend. Because friends would never keep anything from one another. Can I go to the restroom first? Yeah, you can. Hold on a sec. Let me get a boy. Now see if you can pick up on what happens here. First what she does, and then what she says. Hold on. Yeah, when she's about to walk out of the room, and on her last look, she notices that she left her pen on the table. Then seems to realize that it can be used as a weapon against himself or her when she walks back into the room. And when she goes to grab it, she curiously says this. I'm gonna write that down. In convincing and not just conveying. So Rocky doesn't feel that she doesn't trust him. Did you want the bathroom again? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. When's the last time you ate, Rocky? Breakfast. Breakfast? Some casual conversation to generate good rapport while sharing a meal? This is a good strategy. However, watch. Well, that's good. So where did you go to school? Was it hard? No, it's too easy. Too easy? Well, I took some economics way back in the day, but it wasn't easy for me. Do you have brothers and sisters? How are they doing, your brother and sister? Do you want to have children one day? What do you wish we knew about you? To tell people, the investigators, like for instance, I'd be super interested in what you were doing on the 26th of September, as if I can get an alibi. But instead of getting Rocky to talk about the months leading up to the day of the crime, she abruptly starts asking him about the day of the crime. I'd be super interested in what you were doing on the 26th of September. And can you guess what Rocky says? I don't think I have anything to say. You guessed it. A suspect must be lulled into continuously talking truthfully about the days leading up to the crime for them to talk at all about the day of the crime. Most people feel that way at the beginning. Most people, once they see what they're facing and what's going on, they change their mind. She now talks about most people in similar positions as Rocky, which can be powerful to create that expectation of how to act in this unique situation. They realize that there's a benefit to them emotionally to talk about what happened. I think you're going to want to see the material I have. She's surely thinking, we have so much evidence against him, he's going to have to confess. But as we saw with the Jody Arias interrogation, contrary to logic, the amount of evidence is not the main deciding factor for a suspect to confess. Then what is? Just keep your mind open. How is that sandwich? I don't like the sauce. Do you have a woman on the go or a... Or a... <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think anyone will be patient. I want to play video games. I'm forced. To not pay video games. Yes, it's selling the suspect on confessing. Why telling the truth now is better than shutting their mouth, hiring a lawyer, and testing their luck with a jury. Let's see how much she sells Rocky on confessing. I don't have any power. <laughs> Notice that Rocky said that he feels like he doesn't have any power. Clearly, he said that because he wants to feel powerful and now feels powerless. But notice what interrogator Leah says. You're quite right that you don't get to play video games. You don't get to walk out of here, but you do have a lot of power, Rocky. 
Murderers and violent criminals often feel powerless in their lives and sometimes commit the crime to feel powerful. She immediately notices this in Rocky, so she'll tell him that his power is to reveal the truth. I'm sensing some, not something I would hear. <laughs> feel like a trap. No, I'm sure it is. This is our first indication that Rocky is much more aware of the interrogator's tactics than we've seen from other suspects. That's what you do. 100% truthful with you today. I don't know if that assuages or, or helps to eliminate fears that you think that I'm setting a trap or that I'm trying to trap you. Do you ever watch The Big Bang Theory? You remind me of those guys. No, I'm not that smart. <laughs> You're not a genius? It's peaceful. Okay. And quite, I love it. Oh, you loved it? Oh, yeah, good. that's why I leave Hong Kong. I don't like Hong Kong. Hong okay. Kong is a very crowded place. You have kind of a serious cut there. What is that? What? what which one? This here. And this. That's the cops. Oh, the handcuffs. Oh, yeah, it looks kind of red. It looks like an old scar, but it's just no. handcuffs. Because a lot of times, Rocky, there's reasons why things happen, you know what I mean? I know, but... <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> a lot of people don't even want to talk to somebody that they suspect of this crime. They kind of write that person off. This is the classic I'm your only friend tactic, which is to make the suspect feel like other people will judge them poorly for what they did. But someone like interrogator Leah, who talks to criminals all the time, won't judge him. So he should open up to her because remember, murderers often feel alone and misunderstood. So they usually want to talk to anyone who will empathize with them. What happened to those people is serious, but I think what happened before that day is serious. You know, let's forget about that day. I'm worried about what happened before that day, because I think that's the complicated part, because I think that day was simple, but I think the days before it were very complicated. She talks about moving back in time to get him talking about what led up to the crime, which she should have done to start with, but as you'll see, she doesn't do a really good job asking him open-ended questions to get him talking of what happened the months leading up to the crime. I can see clearly a lot of things and I, I feel pretty confident. I don't need you to respond to it. I, I think that I understand human beings enough to know that there's something very complicated in you. It's up to the interrogator to make the suspect feel like he can just talk his way out of the accusations and maybe even go home that night. However, she's coming across as very accusatory. You did it, just admit it. As opposed to, let's hear your side of the story. Wouldn't you be more likely to start talking if you believe that you can go home and sleep in your comfy bed instead of on a three inch thick pad in a smelly jail cell? And so that's why I think that you have to be having a very complicated time. Mm -hmm. Not that complicated actually. How can it be so simple? There's an old saying, first seek to understand before you seek to be understood. She's not understanding him first. If you recall, interrogator Jim in my last video did a really good job at that. Well, for instance, when you got the email, uh, yeah. do you remember where you were? I was at home in Tweed. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you remember if that was a week that you were um, reasonably stable in Trenton or had you flown? No, I had been in Ottawa. I had been in Ottawa earlier in the week. He had Russell Williams tell his side, lies and all. And then once he finished, he laid on all the evidence, proving that Russell was lying. I want you to have an opportunity to address this, because I don't think it's really fair that we only know what's in that house, okay? Why are you laughing? What do we mean fair? She's asking him to tell his side of the story, but... Right now, Rocky, we have done a thorough investigation about what happened in that house. You and I both know what happened in that house. Yeah, she's blatantly saying, you did this and tell us why you did it. That's a lot she's asking from him in one single jump. It's up to the interrogator to lull the suspect into casually speaking openly and honestly. And remember, once a suspect starts talking, yes, it's very difficult for them to abruptly stop. Have you been inside this house? I don't want to talk about it. They're getting a search warrant today for your house. Oh. Yeah, they're going to be searching your house. Maybe they're searching it already. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's most certainly. <laughs> yeah. I just realized well, every man have something they want to hide anyway. Sure. Like what? Prawn. <laughs> if I was going to talk with you again sometime, Rocky, how would I get a hold of you? Like, what kind of email address do you keep? Did you notice that she asked him what his email address is right after she was talking about searching his home? Yeah, they want to know which email address to possibly search. What's your email address? Can I email you? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm call hurt. me, please. 
Does he call me? I'm hurt. But if he's in jail, I doubt he'll be able to send and receive emails. So it's of course obvious to Rocky why she wants to know his email address. Just because English is not his native language doesn't mean he can't spot what she's up to. What else are you worried about there at the house? That's not very pleasant. I'll get you a copy of that search warrant so you can look at it. No thanks. <laughs> you don't want to see it? The police did. He's yeah. real. Did you notice what he just did? The police did. He's yeah. real. Right, he acknowledged that he's able to tell the difference between reality and virtual reality, which confirms that Rocky's claim that he didn't know he was doing it in real life is completely bogus. Yeah, that search warrant is going to be pretty real. Is there anything in that house that you're concerned about? Can I relieve that stress for you at all? Give me my phone. <laughs> you want your phone? Uh, I, want, I want to pay video games, pay apps. I need to do something in the game, on that game. Oh. So, with my friends. I don't think I'll get my phone back. At, le at least not today. Not today, no. I'm sure you're not. You're not my friend. No one in this building is my friend. Anymore. I'm gonna tell you something truthfully, Rocky, and uh, you're right. We aren't friends. There you go, my friend. <laughs> I'm not in a position to trust you. I think you can rest your mind and trust that I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. Come on, shake my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, promise me you're going to keep your mind open, you're going to look at this stuff. Is right. it boring? Of course it is. Oh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're boring. I'm worried about you. I just want you to understand what I'm doing here because I think you've kind of lumped me in with a bunch of other cops. That's right, the I'm not like the others tactic. But at this point, she's been so focused on the crime scene and the day of the crime, she doesn't come across like his high school guidance counselor who wants to understand him, but instead just like a cop who wants him to confess. And now she starts showing him the hard evidence. Have you ever owned a hat like that? I have nothing to say. You and I both know that you've seen that hat before. I'm gonna tell you with 100% certainty that I know you've seen that hat before. And I'm gonna show you how I know that. Because you've done some wrong things here. There's no doubt about that, Rocky. Very wrong things. But I'm not judging you for those things. I'm judging you about what you do about it today. She's telling him that she's not gonna judge him. Because you've done some wrong things here. There's no doubt about that, Rocky. But is judging him currently by not hearing his side of what happened and what led up to that day. I'm just showing you the, the axe. Let's talk about that. Axe. I don't want to talk about it. You never went to that house? Is that what you're saying? I have nothing to say. And I want to be very clear. Of course he did it, but no one wants to feel accused that they committed the crime with 100% certainty. 100% certainty. Before they're able to give their version of the story. Even someone who is as guilty as Rocky Rambo. If I thought you were a write-off and dumb, I wouldn't come in here. I'd just let them take their evidence to the court and that would be it. Most people don't don't want to bother talking to someone who's done something like this, but I do. Now trying to get him to feel fortunate that she will listen to him. Why do you think they want a confession so he pleads guilty instead of him not confessing and pleading not guilty in court? But why don't you just take their evidence to court? Right, it's extremely expensive, time consuming, and painful to the victims and victims' loved ones to have a case tried in court. Because we're learning all these things about what what's a fact and what's not so true. I doubt anything I say will change the result. <laughs> what you say can change people's opinion of you. Because I don't think you're a bad guy. You don't seem inherently wicked. We can't undervalue getting a suspect to confess in their initial interrogation. It sometimes costs taxpayers tens of millions of dollars to try a murder case. Not to mention the possibility that the murderer will walk free over a mistrial or because of a technicality in the investigation. I don't think the, well, the price of believing you is too high for me. Now, Rocky is saying something very similar to what Jodi Arias said in her interrogation. Why should I confess to this now as opposed to fighting this in court? Okay, hey, let's say for a second that I did. And I say, I did it. I mean... You already heard some of interrogator Leah's reasoning, but here's more. And I know you're thinking, what is the upside here for me to talk about this? Wow, that doesn't make any sense. I want you to come in with me early. I want you to show your empathy for those people and their family early, to show your humanity. But I'd like you to come in with me early, so that we can go together and say, here it is, it's a ball of shit, and we feel bad about it. Did you notice that she used the proverbial we? And we feel bad about it. Yeah, that's smart and can be effective, because it'll make Rocky feel like she'll be taking some of the blame off of him and onto herself. However, she's also pitching empathy as a reason for confessing, but I'm not sure how much empathy he has, given the crime he committed 
committed. How about those? Have you ever seen those gloves? I have nothing to say about that. I'm doing this, Rocky, to give you every opportunity in the world to come on board with me early, early in this investigation that I'm going to show you. Because I want you to look better than you look now. Oh, I mean, you don't look good. I promise you, you don't. It looks terrible. Give her credit for knowing that she needs to sell him on confessing and also asking him what happened at the crime scene so he can frame it as he chooses. But then why isn't he starting to confess? What do you think? So there's absolutely no downside to taking a step towards something that doesn't make you look so bad. Yes, because she's asking for too big of a jump from him. Going from I have nothing to say to here's how and why I did it. Have you ever wanted to say something to someone, but you just wanted them to ask it in the right way? Where you wouldn't feel embarrassed or maybe stupid. That's usually a component of the game that the interrogator plays with a suspect. Working the suspect to the point where he wants to open up and confess. I'm gonna tell you something about that guy. He's not a very nice guy. Did you? Did you ever meet him in the street or at the shopping mall or anything like that? I don't want to talk about it. I've heard from lots of people in the neighborhood. He had a problem with alcohol and he wasn't a very nice man. He was rude to people at times. Like if this guy was an asshole to you at some point for some reason and it, it hurt your feelings. <laughs> I have nothing to say. What's so funny? You may have been noticing that he does those little chuckles when he says, I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. Why do you think he does that? Because I have nothing to say. Well, that's not funny. Yeah, it's surely a nervous laughter, a fear of getting caught. And there's also a subcomponent of duping delight. Kind of like I actually have something to say, even though I'm saying I have nothing to say. This is a lot. It's a lot to cope with. I want to alleviate that nervousness. But one thing that people in your shoes describe to me all the time, Rocky, is this crushing feeling in their chest. It's a physical feeling of being unable to breathe and feeling nervous to the point where you can feel it in your chest. The interrogator's describing the feelings that many guilty suspects suspect's experience. But here's the curious thing. It's the interrogator's job to amplify those feelings in this suspect. So the suspect feels so anxious, so nervous, and so stressed that he confesses to the interrogator, helping to alleviate those negative feelings. One thing that people have told me in the past is that once they get through this process and they make some good decisions and they come out the other side, that kind of eases up a bit, relieves some of that anxiety and that nervousness. So it's something you can look forward to. Those gloves. You ever seen them before? I think you should say yes. And the reason I think you should say yes is because it's the truth. Another thing we noticed with interrogator Leah, she doesn't allow for long quiet pauses to create anxiety and pressure for the suspect to answer. And I know it's the truth and so do you. And she unfortunately answers for the suspect when the pause goes on too long. Therefore, she caves first and Rocky is starting to notice this. These are some footprints. Are those your shoes? I got nothing to say. Also, why do you think Rocky is saying over and over, I have nothing to say? Right, because it works to get her to move on. Then what should she do? Yeah, don't move on and repeat the question either from a different angle or in double bind. Are those your shoes? I got nothing to say. Did you wear those shoes in that house that night? Movements can be tracked. Yeah. Because, it, you know, lots of houses have video, right? And so I want you to know that your movements were tracked. Do you know where you were on September 13th? How would I remember? <laughs> I can show you how to remember because I know where you were September 13th. You want to know where you were? I don't want to talk about it. You were at the Canadian Tire buying these gloves and buying this hatchet and buying this hat, son. I got you on video doing those things. So I don't want you to sit there thinking this is nothing. No, because it's I just impolite too well. Just What's use my shoulder. Using my shoulder to respond, that's not very good. Now, did you notice what happened right there? Yeah, he strategically apologizes to her for brushing her off right after she throws tough cop at him. Using my shoulder to respond, that's not very good. Which was done to manipulate her to stop using that technique. He surely knows from experience that when someone is yelling at you and you humbly admit some kind of fault, they'll stop yelling. I don't think you're a bad person. I think that something's happened to you which has caused you to act out. It's about giving these people's family some idea about why this happened. These things were purchased on the 13th of September. You didn't use them for two weeks later. How come you bought those things? Right here, she asks him a question. He doesn't respond. Did you know it was gonna go so bad once you went inside? 
Maybe you didn't intend to have happen what happened. And she doesn't ask the question again. Deliberate repetition, deliberate repetition is one of the strongest verbal displays of power and confidence. And who is doing the most verbal repetition? Yeah, it's Mr. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. And she's really starting to come across as begging and pleading to him. And this is just the start. I don't know how I got this so tied up. Holy moly. Here, fix this for me, please. And this is, of course, Canadian Tire. This is an interesting bit of video here, too. Because you're here, you're looking at the knives, right? Were you looking at knives for some other reason? For cooking or something? I don't know if I'll buy it. Now he's right back to giving her that cold shoulder that he just apologized for giving her. Using my shoulder to respond, that's not very good. Yeah, of course, he wasn't actually sorry. Also, here's another tactic to break his frame. Tell a funny and slightly fabricated story of how when I was a little kid and was guilty of something, I would say, I have nothing to say. Because by saying that, I wouldn't have to worry about getting caught in the lie. But, of course, everyone knew I was guilty. See what that would do? Now, every time he says anything like, I have nothing to say, you can chuckle. And he will eventually laugh too, feeling like he's admitting guilt each time he says, I have nothing to say. Which will break his frame, getting him to speak more openly. Once we were able to find this purchase of these things, it caused us to fixate on you. You know that hat, we found it underneath the table at the house where all this happened. Once we had the serial number off that hatchet, we were able to direct us right to this video. Do you want to tell us why you bought those things? Like, this is it. You're going to be charged with two counts of murder. Is there any reason why you'd be driving that woman's car? I have nothing to say. Another tactic. Accuse him of something outrageous. Where he would knee-jerk deny the accusation. Kind of like, there was a similar murder in the other town about a month ago. Were you involved in that one too? When he says no in reflex, that's when you say, I see, you were just involved in this one. Okay. I don't know if this is about video games affecting the way you think or in video game presentation. You found yourself now, you're you're in a you're screwed. You're gonna be charged with murder times too. I have nothing to say. You remember not very long ago, I think maybe just a few days ago, less than a week ago, you were at the grocery store. Remember being at the grocery store and there was a girl there. She had a sore arm. Remember that? She had her arm in a sling and she couldn't get her bottle open. You remember that? I can see from your face that you're lighting up. Well, you were a nice guy, but that woman with the sore arm, that was a police woman. What did you do? You did one of these. Remember that? You know why we had you do that? We were looking for your DNA. Yeah, cops are sneaky. And him knowing this now isn't exactly helping his trust towards her. Now listen to what Rocky says to the interrogator. Why we would gather your DNA. Pardon? Take your time. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's a power play. Rocky surely feels powerless, so in his mind, he's turning this interrogation into a game against the interrogator, getting her to feel subordinate to him so he can feel more powerful. This is just the start. You're not going to believe how far he takes this. That's kind of you. There's the guy we see at Canadian Tire. We see him walking. And where did you go? But you went to the Bank of Montreal. As soon as you left, they go right in there, capture your image again, and capture your name. Eventually, of course, they just followed you back to your house. So now we know who you are. We know where you live. So when Mrs. Ma Jones went for her autopsy and had her fingernails clipped and there was a male DNA profile underneath her nails, well, we just knew we had to get your DNA and see if it matched the DNA under her fingernails. And so there you were, giving us your DNA at the grocery store. And guess what? It matches. Rocky, it's over. Your DNA is underneath her fingernails. Are you shocked? Or did you know we were coming? I have nothing to say. Well, Rocky, come on. Come on, Rocky. Pleading and begging for a confession is surely not a tactic endorsed by the Reed technique. So why is begging and pleading so bad? It makes the suspect feel powerful. And someone who is feeling powerful isn't going to forfeit their power, succumbing to someone who they feel is weak. That just can't be your response to this. If you were going to confess, would you want to be cracked by an interrogator who you believe is strong or weak? Oh, Rocky, come on. Come on, Rocky. Right, strong. Why? It can't be. So unfair to those people. An explanation is really required for you to maintain your humanity. Are you going to show me why evidence or are we done? No, we're not done. Yes, because it's acceptable and understandable that you would confess to a strong interrogator. If you confess to an interrogator who you believe to be weak, then what does that make you? What are we going to do here? You, uh, you, 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 <laughs> you hope you're holding me. <laughs>
He's basically just laughing at the interrogator because he feels he's winning. Making this a game is surely a coping mechanism because it diverts his attention away from his inevitable fate. But nevertheless, it's causing him not to confess. I wondered if it was because you felt powerless in the world, had an ax to grind with that man. There's a reason why this happened, Rocky. It can't be just that you said, you know what? I'm gonna kill some people today and it's gonna be that guy. Do you feel bad? Are you scared what your parents are gonna think? Do you care what they think? What do you think they're gonna say? What do you think your brother's gonna say? Are you worried about that? <laughs> I have nothing to say. He offended the lady at the liquor store where he went twice a day because he had a liquor problem. Maybe he came across your bow and was ignorant to you. He did not impress people as a nice man. If that's a factor, I think that goes a long way to put you in a different light. It doesn't matter what the suspect tells himself to rationalize to the public why he did it. Because he's not going to be teaching high school ethics class. A confession is a confession. So just get the damn confession. You can see that the evidence is overwhelming. That you planned this. You waited two weeks. I want to hope you went in there to take something. And it just went grossly wrong. That's what I want to hear. That's what I hope is true. Now floating the idea of a lighter version of the crime just to get him to budge. If you recall, this tactic was done and worked well in Chris Watts. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? No, I don't know. However, it was more effective on Chris because he was already talking. If any of you are concerned that they're putting this idea in his head and they may let him off too easy, it's just the first step to get him to start confessing. Because remember, guilt is determined based on the evidence and not merely what the defendant says. And you just don't seem like a scary guy to me. How how did this happen? I have something to say. Do you have anything you want to say to your family? Are they to blame for any of this? I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. Is this going to cause some embarrassment for your family? Sure it is. Did you notice he gave a rare reactionary response? What his family thinks of him is surely a sensitive topic for him. Are you worried about that? I have nothing to say. I want to make sure that everybody sees the whole picture, Rocky, not just this. You can't keep this bottled up. It's not good for you. Take some rest. Have a dinner. Rocky is basically telling her to go home and assumes a position of dominant figure by deciding to end the meeting. <sighs> I'm going to sit with you. I think you need company. How did her response to that seem to you? Right, he insults her by implying, I'm kicking you out of my office, and she responds with that? I think you need company. When you know someone is not on your side, and they want something as much as interrogator Leah wants, how would that make you feel? Right, very suspicious that if this is something the interrogator wants so much, it must be really bad for you then. She's unfortunately coming across as desperate, partially because she's not using her tough bad cop persona enough. Mm. Husband, children. Husband, children, you tell me who's calling you. Husband, children. Tell me about yourself, Clarice. Do you think he's gonna suddenly confess at this point? You can feel the power dynamic, right? The suspect is not going to suddenly confess when he feels like he's winning. You stare at me, he's kind of uh, boring. <laughs> well, I guess if I hadn't heard that before, I would be offended, but. Heard that a lot? <laughs> and you're still doing it. Okay. The interrogator must maintain power, control, and strength, while the suspect must be made to feel powerless, submissive, and weak for him to confess. As you can imagine, there are subconscious acts and mindsets that go into creating and maintaining an environment of power, control, and strength. And we'll talk more about that in a Moron video on my More channel. You have to admit that something has gone terribly wrong. Of course it is. Someone is being murdered. I thought you were crying out for attention and saying, I want the world to notice me. How can you look at that and say, I'm good, don't worry about me, I know you got my DNA under her fingernails, but fuck her. Who gives a shit about her? Who gives a shit about this guy? I'm good. Because that's what it feels like, Rocky. It feels like you're saying, yeah, no, I'm fine. Are you fine? If my attitude makes you feel bad, I apologize. I have nothing to say, just go home. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't work that easily. See ya. They noticed that Rocky has become way too comfortable in his office, so they pull him out to surprise him with a redecorating job.
put some things oh, up yeah. so that you can see clearly. You surely understand why the interrogator is doing this. Yeah, it's to make him feel cornered by all the evidence. And so we can easily see the mountains of evidence right in front of him. Do you want to come and see these things just so it's I clear to you? want to. Oh, come on. It'll make it clear to you, Rocky. But at this point, given Rocky's mindset that we're observing, how do you think this is going to come across? I want you to tell me what happened. What do you know about why you did this? I mean, if it's confusing to you, just say. I mean, that's all right, that you don't understand every part of it. I know you're trying, but... I really couldn't say anything. Right, as more of an indication that they're extremely desperate for him to confess, which is even more proof for himself that confessing is really good for them and therefore must be really bad for him. Where were you bleeding? You were bleeding when you left that place. What? Mm -hmm. Well, you were scratched, I know that, because uh, Miss Ma Jones had your DNA on There's her. nothing I would say. Lose your patience. I'm never going to lose my patience. Yeah, or your first sleeping. Anything. Really, Rocky? That's what you're thinking here? In the face of all this, that's what you're thinking about? I'm just gonna wear this woman out. Who cares? Let's start treating it like it's a serious situation, shall we? For you to sit there and go, I'm gonna wait for this woman to get sleepy. Really? That's your reaction to this? Now we finally get some of her bad cop persona. Because if you noticed, we didn't see much of that. And when we did, Rocky quickly diffused it because he surely felt it was starting to work on him. I'm gonna sit here and wait till this woman and get sleepy. Yeah, I've axe murdered two people. Ah, I'm good. Is that what you're doing, Rocky? Come on. This old man right here is in a walker. There, you gotta explain that. That's gross. He was an elderly, old, drunkard in a walker. Why? Did you do this? Instead of ranting and posing rhetorical questions, she should be using the tough pressure of bad cop to wait for an answer, getting him to respond in fear. I'm gonna wait for this woman to get tired. I don't really care. I'm laughing through this whole thing. I'm grinning away. I don't really care. Are you implying you're out of shape? Like, so it's a fair fight? Is that what that was? Oh, look at me. I'm fat. I'm out of shape. So it's a fair fight for this old man? That was actually a genius double bind, where she offended him implying that he's fat and weak, making him want to respond out of pride. All she has to do at this point is keep quiet, look right at him aggressively demanding an answer. Let's see if she can keep quiet and let Rocky trip himself up. I don't think so, man. No! She keeps bailing him out by answering her own questions. Yeah, he usually says, I have nothing to say. But ask him again. Ask him why. Ask it in double bind. Wait as long as necessary for him to respond. Quietly say his name. Long periods of silence usually make people feel uncomfortable and anxious. But let the suspect have those feelings. The interrogator can't be the one who feels anxious and breaks the silence, bailing out the suspect from responding. Is that really what you're bringing to the table? I'm, on, I'm an out of shape gamer so it's a fair fight no it's disgraceful well not very many people had many good things to say about him this lady they called her a, i think she was a hero of medicine she won multiple awards for the help that she'd given people i have nothing to say come on rocky look at this woman was she accidental nothing to say Ha 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 Sorry. That is a bad habit, my friend. I have nothing to say. What do you want to know? I want to know what, why you went in there. There's nothing I can't say. You just don't seem wicked to me. Like a normal lost kid. Is there something else going on I don't know about? Was it mistaken identity? You went there looking for somebody else? Rocky, I just, I don't know if you're, you're seeing clearly or if you understand how terrible it looks. Yeah, she now continues asking him questions, but never pressures him into answering any of those questions. It comes across like she wants to be heard and doesn't really want to hear from the suspect. Do you recall how interrogator Jim used silence to pressure Russell Williams to confess? Russell. What are we going to do? An explanation would go a long way to assuage fears and 
make fe people feel better. I mean, there's a lot of unanswered questions that we're going to answer. I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know what your fear is. I don't know what you think will happen if you tell me what went on or wh why this happened. I don't know what you think is going to happen. She's not allowing the anxiety of long periods of silence to build in Rocky. And if he brushes the question off, lay her on additional pressure to get an actual answer. The sky isn't going to fall. Your brother said he loves you no matter what. I think your mom and dad and your grandmother would be less embarrassed. Save the family that part of the embarrassment. I'll help you tell the story. I'm not going to leave you here to feel it alone, you know. I can tell that you want to talk about this. And I really can assure you that you're going to feel better when you get it out. I mean it. I'm going to help you tell this, okay? You're just looking at me like you're not sure, but you know what? You have to admit that from the start to the finish, I've told you the truth. I'll tell this story exactly the way you want me to tell it. But she just either keeps answering her own questions or never posing it as a question. Pose it as a question and demand an answer. Does she really think he's going to interrupt her, jump out of his chair and say, enough, I can't take it anymore. I did it. Oh. I can tell you're torn in half inside and it's a difficult decision, but there is no downside. I've said it a hundred times. When a case is this complete, what do you think will happen if you talk about this? I don't know if that's what you wanted at the end of the day was to be feared by your family and your neighbors. I don't know if that was ultimately what you're after. I feel like you wanted to be known because you made it so obvious, but what is it that you wanted? Can you tell me what you wanted? <sighs> After all that, we finally hear from Rocky. Rhetorical questions and dialogue can be powerful, but speaking in practically all rhetorical questions for 10 minutes straight and not engaging the suspect much isn't making a lot of progress. She had a lot of good questions and made good points, but pressure him to give a sufficient response. He's of course not gonna interrupt her and say, oh, wait, 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 that one, that one, that's the reason why I did it. Why is your DNA on this knife outside the house where these people were killed? If I say, <laughs> what? You're gonna release me? No. It isn't about that. Don't you understand that after all this conversation, you're not being released, no matter what. I know. You've killed two people, man. You're not going anywhere. This isn't about being released. Rocky knows he's not gonna be released, but he's apparently thinking the same thing Jody Arias was thinking. Why should I confess to this now, as opposed to coming up with a bogus story with my attorney and testing my luck with a jury? This is about helping other people, but you don't care about that. That's all I've been talking about all night is you helping other people. You've done enough to hurt other people, that's for sure. She's mostly making confessing about helping other people. But someone who committed such a senseless act like that probably doesn't have much empathy. So he surely doesn't care how people he never met feel. You just playing games, Rocky? Is that what it is? Like this whole thing seems like a big game to you. You're laughing all the way through the, the interview and you don't even seem to take it seriously. You're just giggling away there. I want you to tell me the truth, Rocky. That's all. Maybe today you're not ready to talk about the whole ugly story, but at least say you're sorry. For what? For what? You're an animal. So what's going to happen now is that they're going to take some photographs of some of the marks on your body and they're going to take your clothing uh, and uh, document all of that before they send you to jail. Do I have the right to regret? No. No, we're gathering evidence and you're under arrest for murder times two. So what they're going to do is they're going to wait for a wagon to show up and they're going to take you off to jail. Okay. Rocky, well, good luck to you. Okay. You may be wondering if anyone could have cracked Rocky into confessing that night. Possibly not. But they would have had a lot better chance if they didn't make so many of those critical mistakes. Also keep in mind, this is not interrogator Leah's only interrogation. She surely had a lot better outcomes for her to be doing this for so long. So this could have been a bad day or undesirable circumstances. Remember, it's not fair to judge anyone's entire career based on a single day. Give this video a thumbs up if you think Rocky knew he was committing the acts in real life. Give this video a thumbs down if you think Rocky actually thought he was committing these acts in a video game. Now in the comments, why do you think Rocky Rambo actually did it? Was the old man mean to him? Did he want to live out a video game fantasy? Is it his parents' fault for naming him Rocky Rambo? Or maybe you somehow believe Rocky that he thought he was playing a video game and didn't know he was real life. 
let everyone know in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button now because we don't want you to miss out on new body language and investigative videos that always seem to shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top.